Routers when used on the edge of your stock can be tricky to balance. Since most of the router is hanging out the stock, you're constantly fighting to keep it anchored. But if we extend the router base and add a handle, we're not just balancing it, we're using leverage to our advantage. This is an onion project, and in the first layer, we're starting with the popular plexiglass drop and style base, often used in router tables. Let's get started. To make this, all you need is a piece of plywood and a dowel. Super simple, I know, but because we are using a dowel as a handle, you'll want to make sure that your plywood is at least three quarters of an inch thick. That extra thickness makes sure the dowel has enough surface area for a strong glue bond, keeping everything solid. And of course, you'll need your plexiglass base already attached to your router. If you haven't done that yet, I've got a quick method for it on my website. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can get that set up first. We're gonna map this out now, and I made sure that my plywood is the width of my plexiglass. I've got an eight inch plexiglass here, so my piece is eight inches wide. Because I really wanna make sure that I've got enough viewing on the top, I'm only gonna place this about that far away from the top so that I'm still getting the center part over the, the edge. I've also made this a little bit wider. Here's my prototype. And I did that on purpose so that I could have an edge over here that I could run my router on. Since I want my router to be three and three quarters of an inch away from the edge, and that is where the edge of my plate will be with the plywood. And since I did add an extra inch, I'm gonna be going four and three quarters of an inch away from the edge. I'll use my marking gauge to set this. And yes, it's just big enough that I can do this. You don't need to have this marking gauge to make this, but I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite things to use when it's time to map things out. Once again, I'll use my marking gauge and I'll set this to four inches and draw my line. I've got a compass and I'm gonna set this to an inch and a quarter for my radius. I'll come to an inch and a quarter. Looks like I moved it a little bit, so just go in a little bit more. It's really not that critical though. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to take my yardstick and put it on the point here, as well as on my circle on that side. Now I'm gonna set my marking gauge to an inch and I'll draw this side over here. We need to set the height of our bit and this is an exact thickness as the last piece that I have here. So I'm gonna be using that, but it's really important that we make sure that this is the exact thickness. Otherwise, later on as we use this, there's a chance that it could hit the side or the edge and or even make it lean a little bit and we don't want that. You can always cut on a piece of scrap and then check to see if that is gonna be flush. To make this cut, it should be obvious that we wanna be really careful with this line. We don't have to be as careful with that side over there. With my router base off and my handles taken off, you can see how far this is going to lean over. It's slightly over half. Because this is going to be on the opposite side like this, I need to cut this area out so that it will be able to slide in. So what I'm gonna do first is just measure. I'm gonna to check to see how far on this side I am. And it looks like I go in at about an inch on that side, and it should be an inch on this side, and then about an inch on this side. So if I add this to my line here, I'll move in an inch and then an inch on this side as well as an inch over here. Now I can take this off and I can place this on here so that it lines up and then trace a few lines. With my piece cut and ready to go, I'm gonna take a square and line it up on the corner here and draw a line like that. I'll come in here now and measure it and it looks like it's two and a half inches and half of that would be one and a quarter inches. And right there, go ahead and slide this on. On the underside, I'm just gonna place a mark over each side and this is where we're going to attach it. We don't really need to go really long with these. These are an inch and a quarter and they should be fine. I will be using a center drill bit, but unfortunately for me, this is going to be a little bit too small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start it off with this bit, and again, all these bits are going to be on the website, so it's easy for you, you to find later on. And then I'm gonna to switch to this other countersink bit, which should get me to the half inch that I need in order for these to sit flush.
right below the surface. I've lined this up over my mark now. I've got a clamp on this side and this just barely hangs off the side and I'm going to use a twist drill bit to drill this out now. And now I can use a bolt to tighten this up for now and release the other side so that I can drill it out. And since I am a little bit more limited with this, I'm just gonna go ahead and use a backer and drill this out. There we go. I'm gonna add some wing nuts to this to lock it in place. But I like to use these Bittner nuts, which is just basically pressing two together, two different nuts. I will have a link, well, the bite size that will show up. You'll be able to find that in the description, in the list of bite sizes, if you'd like to do it this way instead. But wing nuts will work just fine. Before we attach everything, we'll go ahead and drill out this hole right here, which will be for a dowel handle. As far as the size of the handle, I'm just gonna be cutting mine at five inches. And here it is with it all put together. The one thing that we need to do is make sure that we wax this side. It just really helps to prevent any kind of resistance. To test this out, I've got a rabbiting bit installed in my router. I've got a panel here that will be part of a cabinet. I need to route out a channel so that I can fit my backer into it later on. So this will give us a perfect chance to see how this works. When I was in the process of designing this, I really didn't know the exact distance that I wanted my handle to be away from the center of the router, so I left it kind of on the wider side. If it really doesn't feel right to you, you can always take the line on the bottom, and I've got another example here. Move in a little bit closer, set your compass to an inch and a quarter, and then you'll just draw lines on the edges to these points down here. You'll drill a new hole out, add your handle, and you're ready to go. In this layer, as trim routers continue to grow in popularity, I'll show you how to add the same kind of leverage with an extended plate. While you can buy one of these plates, I'm gonna show you how to make one for very little, giving you a custom fit for your own router. This design really works for a full-size router, but I don't think it works as well for a trim router. So let's go ahead and put this aside, and we'll bring a trim router in here. Trim routers are kind of awkward in that they are long and tall, they're not very heavy. Any kind of slight bump to it can cause it to move around a little bit. We used a handle for the last one, but I don't think it would work as well with this as I think that any kind of movement or bump on one side can cause problems with the router. So instead of a handle, I'm gonna be going with a knob of some kind. You can buy these little wooden knobs at woodworking places, or you can go to the store, a hardware store, and buy knobs for cabinets. This is the design that I came up with. It's a little bit smaller. Um, it's going to have a lower profile, and I created it by taking a piece of longer wood like this, a strip of wood, and just attaching the router to one side, and then kind of moving my hand in and out to find where I thought was a sweet spot. I found that about three and a half inches from the center is about where I'd want to put my knob later on. This is my own experience, so I, I recommend you doing the same thing to, to see exactly where it feels more comfortable for you. Instead of using plywood like we used in the last one, I'm gonna be using a piece of plexiglass, and this is because I want it to have a very low profile. I did cut this off from a larger piece. It still has both backings on it. Both backings are important right now, and you wanna make sure that if you do what I did, that you make your sides parallel. But let's go ahead and get started on making this. With the backing on it, and this is really just so that it's easier to mark on, I'm gonna take a carpenter square. I'm gonna line up my point on this side, make sure that it's flush against the back, and then draw a line. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing. And that's gonna be my center right there. I don't know if you can see it. Like I said, I found that three and a half inches is what I'm, I like. So I'll open this up to three and a half inches, place it on that center, and I'll create an arc. Now I'll set my compass to three quarters of an inch. I'll place the pencil next to the edge and then put the point on my arc. The base plate of my router is about three and a half inches, which is what I want to base mine off of. I'll set this to an inch and three fourths, find my center again, and then draw the body shape. Like the last one, I'll take a straight edge and I'm just gonna connect the edges of my circles. And if you've done this right, and this circle is on this edge here, and this circle is on this edge, then you don't have to worry about this side. But it looks like I'm a little off, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line. And that's my shape. 
Because acrylic is really nasty stuff, it'll sometimes melt and form on the back side. So an easy trick to help to lubricate your blade to keep it a little bit cooler is just to use a candlestick. You don't want a soy candle. You don't want a beeswax one. It just needs to be plain paraffin. So I'll bring it over here and just start it up and coat it a little bit. I've taken the plate off my router and I'll be using this as a template so I know where to drill my holes. If I were to attach my router to the base plate, it would attach on like this. So I'm gonna be placing this face down. I found that a 5 30 seconds inch drill bit fits inside of these holes. So that's what I've got attached right now. The bit that I have chucked up is a brad point bit. And while you don't want to drill into acrylic with it, it's just gonna be enough to make my marks for now. With all my marks made, I can take this off. If you don't have a configuration like this, where you have four screws that you can find the center, some of these have three, then once you attach your plate again, just use a V groove bit, which is right here, and that will mark it and allow you to take it back to the drill press and drill it out. I've got a 5 30 seconds bit in here, but this is a twist drill bit. These work much better in plastic. If you're having a hard time drilling out your hole still with your twist bit, you can use some paraffin wax. This is a really cheap candle that you can get at Walmart, but this will help the bit cut a little bit better. It'll cool off the bits, and I think it helps, helps to even extract the, bit, the dust a little bit better as well. I found that the head of my machine screws are 17 64ths in width. These call for a little bit bigger holes, but I'd rather not drill them out if I don't have to because they are really close to the edge. But before I drill those out, I am going to press this down and get the depth. I'll lock that in place. And I've also flipped this over. So this is the bottom side the last time we cut. And these are twist drill bits again. Now, before we go on, it's important for me to note that you wanna make sure that this centers itself. And you can do this by just kind of loosely holding on and allowing it to center itself as it goes down. And while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and drill that center out. I'm gonna drill it out at an inch and a half. I'm also gonna drill out the handle and you're gonna to need to find the diameter of your screw. Mine is a quarter of an inch. If you have a pan head, you'll wanna go with a taper and to seat that inside my plastic, I'm gonna use a single flute countersink bit. Again, drill bits and tools will all be on the website. Oh, and also you're gonna to wanna to have your countersink bit on the same side that your screw heads are gonna fit on your router. I came up with my own knob that I'm gonna add. And there we go. So there you have it, a custom router base you can make yourself. If you need to modify it, you'll have everything set up to fit your exact needs. As mentioned in the video, you can watch the first part of the series to attach the base plate. That video will pop up at the end of this video as well as be in the description. If you found this helpful, hit like so more people can find it. And if you want more woodworking solutions, subscribe for more. As always, please leave a comment down below thanking my patrons who keep all of this going. And remember to keep making things.